Hi, my name is Marianne Semama. I'm a French and photographer and filmmaker. I live in Paris and uh, I'm really honored to have been selected uh, to the panorama section at the Berlinale. Uh, this is a film I present about an artist, a great, great and radical American artist, David Wonarowicz, who died of AIDS in 1992 and whom I had a, a very strong relationship, working with him, collaborating, making films, images, sounds, videos, and I enjoy it. Actually, I feel really empty right now, so I don't think there's a lot I can say. The thing that occurs to me is that, you know, so what? We have a documentation of David with rage. We have a documentation of David angry. We have a documentation of David scared. So what is, you know, it's all this stuff for, that I can only imagine is for after my death. And, I, and again, it's like, so what? You know, how many thousands of people have died of AIDS now? How many documentations do we have to have of the sick, dying faggot sitting in a room, you know, going through whatever shit that he's going through, and oh, look, he has rage, and oh, yes, he has fear, and oh, yes, he, you know, he, he has a, a mind, and oh, yes, he created these things. And some people think they're beautiful, other people think they're full of shit. And, and to be a participant, in recording myself for after my death, it just seems pretty fucked up. I mean, there's moments that I look at it and I just think that's pretty fucking sick. Hi, welcome to the 33rd Teddy Award. My name is Jean Borbobak, and this time we're going to talk about the film Self-Portrait in 23 Rounds, a chapter in David Wojnarowicz's life by Miriam Semama, who's here to talk about the film. Hi, welcome Hi. to the festival and welcome to the Teddy Award. Thank you. Um, so you are, you were a long time collaborator of David Wojnarowicz and also a good friend of, of his. Um, how was he as a person and how was it to, to work with him? Uh, it was very intense, yeah. very intense and um, very joyful. You know, like it was exciting to work with him because he, he always had everything already in his mind as concept, as yeah. a concept. And uh, I was working with him, helping him, you know, putting things together and help him uh, to to conceptualize yeah. what, what he wanted to do. And there was a lot of different support, you know, it could be photos, it could be videos, it could be sound. It could be just spending time together and, uh, and he would improvise something like you, you can see it in the film. Uh, there's, a, there's a little sequence uh, where he's speaking about a little bug that he holds yeah. on his hand right. and it's, it's really um, improvised. Yeah. And then from this text, uh, he, he made a photo of a little bug in a hand and, and printed the text on the photo and then uh, there was this video, so you know, from from us, from one idea, he could use several support. Yeah, right. Yeah. It was very interesting to see because the basis of of the film is this interview um, that you shot that he had with uh, Silver Lotringa. Yeah. Um, but then it also is mixed with with all these archival footage that came from your archive and mm -hmm. from his yeah. his estate. Um, what made you make this decision to, to combine these two elements? Well, you know, I have to say it took me 29 years to make yeah. this movie. It's a long process, <laughs> of course, yeah. in and on, of course. But uh, I had, you know, after David uh, David's death, um, first it was very difficult to look at at the, at the footage. You know, yeah, we I'm did sure together at the collaboration because of his voice because of his presence, you know, and it was yeah. too painful for me. So Certainly. it took me already a few years before I could really go back to all the archives because I had so many things, you know, videos, photos, sounds, you know, things we did together, things we didn't finish, 
that we were working on and um, yeah. and also I did this his uh, last trip with him in the southwest uh, you know so there was a lot of emotion a lot of uh, mm. souvenir memories a lot of footage and uh, so it took me time you know I mean I was thinking about that you know like what can I do with all of this? Because he yeah, always right. pushed me to to, yeah. to make a movie. You know, we w when I came to New York with a camera, he asked me to come with a camera so we could do something around mm. him. You know, so I knew that I had to do this film. You know, just for him to mm. thank him, to thank him for everything he gave me in my life. Yeah. You know, that was pretty strong. And uh, little by little, um, supported by uh, Silver Lotringue, um, I got uh, I got an artist residency with a grant in Canada at Banff mm. Center, which okay. is an incredible center yeah. for artists. And uh, so I went there and I start looking at the footage and I made a, a 30 mini mi millimeters, no, 30 minutes mm. film. Mm. Uh, about the summer we spent together and we had a video camera so it's called summer 89 it's yeah. pretty I never showed it because it's kind of private you know yeah. the summer but from that summer there was the sequence of the little bug mm. um, the the family album with the mm. cat uh, and also when he's roaring on the lake yeah. you know that yeah. summer we did a lot of footage yeah. So I started with that, like an intimate uh, diary about yeah. that summer, you know, how the camera would go from hand to hand and, and yeah. doing things. So it's, it's like a journal. I, I like it a lot, but I never show it. Yeah. And then um, uh, I had a second, a few years later, I had a second uh, grant uh, mm. in Canada too, in Winnipeg. And then I started working uh, on on the interview yeah. because it's a four hours and a half interview. Right. So there, it was a lot of work, you know, yeah. to to transcribe the sound, to see the different themes he was uh, touching, yeah. you know. And um, and then I start, you know, like editing, like thinking, okay, he's speaking about this subject, this subject, this subject. Yeah. How can I do with all this? And right. also the material. I had because I wanted um, what I wanted to show in this film is like th this that's why I call I call it a chapter in David Wonarowicz's mm -hmm. life because these two years were very intense yeah. because he knew he just heard he just learned he was HIV positive and so th there was this emergency of yeah. uh, you know saying what he has to say Same. and do what he had to do and 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 you know, to show who he was yeah. and on, a, on a strong um, statement. Yeah. And um, so, what I wanted, what what I I wanted to show in this film, self portrait, is that his life and his work are the same one thing. Mm -hmm. That what he had in mind, he put it on words, he put it on photos, he put it on paintings, he put it on videos. Yeah. You know. And I think the, the, the film shows that. Certainly, yeah. De it definitely comes through. And I wanted to show that, that uh, his life and his work as, uh, are the same. Yeah, you know? yeah, and, and the film definitely succeeds in that. Um, and you, as you said as well, there are many different um, topics that he mentions in this interview and also from, from your edit footage, a lot, um, mm. a lot of themes are covered. Um, about his creative process as an artist, about sexuality, and very prominently about um, living with HIV and facing death um, at that time that that was the case. Um, and I and I thought that these were all very touching and were all relating very deeply. Um, to his activism yeah. and in that sense I kind of felt like that this aura of activism was transported to your work as well and it and it still um, I would say it still functions as an activist piece in a way mm. would you would you consider it that way yes yeah, always even even uh, before he knew he had AIDS because I met him in 83 mm. he was already a radical person 
Yeah. You know, it's not that age that make him radical. Right. He was an incredible person, very radical, very straight in the way he would yeah. look at at uh, American civilization and at the world yeah. and at the structure of power. You know, that's what really attracted me to yeah. him. You know, because I was coming from Europe, you know, the 70s were heavy, mm. heavily political, and I was involved, I was an activist yeah. in the 70s. And when I came to live in New York, I mean, he was the first artist I made that was so radical, you know, and, and we got along right away, you know, like something happened, yeah. you know, something shift in, in, yeah. uh, when we met, you know, because we were speaking about the same things. Mm. And for me, it was uh, really an, an incredible uh, person, you know, yeah. I could relay on. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so you know, he was an. He always has been an activist. Yeah. Always. Yeah. In his mind, and I think since he was a kid. You yeah. Know? Um, let's talk a bit about the AIDS crisis and and um, and the, yeah, because I think that there is a really strong uh, testament about that in this movie, um, and uh, I, I just wonder how was it at that time to deal with this material and to see him go through this process and doing so much in order to to make this whole thing visible when everybody was turning their heads to the other side. Um, was this particularly important for you to give such a prominent space in your film uh, for his words about AIDS and the AIDS epidemic? Yes. Um how can I say? You know, I went to I went with him to uh, to some uh, act up demonstration. Yeah. I went to court with him. You know, when uh, act up was in court, yeah. I have some footage of that. But uh, you know, there's um, I didn't show it. You know, I wanted something more intimate. I wanted his words yeah. talking about the confronting this situation yeah. and how he, he would look at the world and yeah. how he would look at government decision and you know uh, I prefer to go through his work yeah. to show his uh, anger and yeah. uh, revolt you know instead of you know showing him uh, in demonstration and uh, uh, I think it's going to be done there's a there's a filmmaker uh, from LA Chris McKim, mm. who's making a film right now about David's mm. activism, and, uh, and I saw the teaser, and yeah. really, I think he's going to make a great movie, it's going to be very completely great. different of mine, and I think both will be um, complementary. Yeah. Me, I wanted to stay in something uh, kind of intimate, yeah. you know, and uh, respecting his words and, yeah. and, and showing how his work and and uh, and his mind. We're one thing. We're yeah. one thing. Yeah, you and know? it's really strong in the movie. This mm. I this intimacy. Um, yeah, I would say that the film is a really good piece of how one can take care of a very important artistic heritage. And I really, in my mind, I really considered it as as a heritage piece in in a way. Um, do you do you have this in your mind? Oh, Is yes. this oh, my a God. mission of yours? Yes, yes. Yeah. It was a mission for yeah. me, you know, like a, if there's one film I had to do in my life, it's this one. It's this one. And for David, and yeah. for David, really. Yeah. Because, um, you know, I, re I realized how much this guy gave me. And in mm. this interview, he gave so much of himself, you yeah. know, like he was, uh, he was completely open. And, and you know what I like, why I call this film uh, uh, Self-Portrait in 23 Rounds? Self-Portrait in 23 Rounds is a chapter of one of his books, mm -hmm. Close yeah. to the Knives. And for me, it was important not to follow the interview chronologically, mm -hmm. but yeah. like and, and the, the film is constructed in 23 parts. Yes. I didn't put chapter one, chapter two, yeah, you know, right. it would have been too heavy. I just put some uh, chapters, but in fact, it's, there's 23 sequences, yeah. you know. Um, so I thought it was a good structure, you know, to be free uh, yeah. editing uh, the film. Yeah. 
And uh, I wanted to say also that uh, the editor, François Pain, yeah. really did a great, great job. He's a video artist and yeah. uh, video maker and documentary uh, filmmaker. And really, we work very well together. And uh, I really love the parts that are his yeah. and uh, yeah. his creativity. Yeah. You know? Well, thank you, Marianne, for this. You're it's, it's really a beautiful piece, and thank I you. think we really get an intimate view into into David's life and and his life as an artist, which you said intermingle completely. Um, so yeah. I, I just would like to yeah. say something. Please. You know, if people who look at who will look at this interview, people who would like to make a movie. But they, they, they don't want, they can't do it because they have no money, they have mm -hmm. no producer, you know. Yeah. I just want to tell them, just take a camera and do what you have to do. You know, you will see later, you'll find the money later, you know, but just do it. It's important. It took me 29 years to make this movie, but today I'm happy. I'm 68 and I'm really happy that it happens now and I'm really happy that all this exists. So just take a camera. The camera is like, a, um, um, how do you say? Um, um, ha, sorry. Uh, for me, a camera is like a weapon. Yeah. You know, a weapon mm. and just use it. Yeah. And do what yeah. you have to do with images. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank You're you. welcome.